This video is brought to you by Skillshare, an online learning community for all kinds of creatives. Hey everyone, I'm finally back here on YouTube after like a really long break. I disappeared from YouTube for like a month and a half now just to prepare for final exams properly. I was going to return to YouTube a lot earlier, but after final exam season, I was just so burnt out. And I was also just like super busy with other stuff. But yeah, one of the things I got busy was, was actually just reorganizing my workspace. So my desk looks pretty much the same as like it always has, but over here, I got some new storage stuff. Let me zoom out. Uh, okay, I like that. But yeah, I got this like Ikea cabinet that almost every single artist has. <laughs> it's so handy. Like I can now fit all my paper stuff and pens that I rarely use, but still, still kind of use. While I was procrastinating and not returning to YouTube, I organized all my pencils by color. I don't know, I just kept doing things to avoid coming back to YouTube right away. And I'm glad I took out my time with it because now I'm super excited to be back. Over here, I have another shelf. I finally have room to like display my art supplies in a way that makes me want to reach for them. Like these markers here just make me constantly want to use markers. And like, I even have space for decor. I used to have space for none of this. Like I used to only have like a single white like shelf thingy. Uh, and it was just stuffed with papers piled on top of each other. Now my papers are organized like here. So yeah, basically I'm giving you guys a mini studio tour. Uh, like acrylics, extra supplies and more acrylics. And under these acrylics is actually the star of today's video, which uh, I'll get to in a moment. But yeah, I, uh, I kept busy, just not busy filming, busy organizing and trying to put my life together sort of thing. But yeah, now that we're done with the super long intro, today's video is a video that I've been really excited to make um, for quite a while now. Today, I'm gonna be reviewing the 56 color Mia Himi gouache set. Now, for those of you who've been on my channel for a while, you probably have seen, or at least like kind of know, or maybe you don't, I'm not going to assume, <laughs> but I made a video a couple years back on the smaller Mia Himi set, and it was a very negative review. Part of the reason that it was such a negative review is because at the time I was a beginner at using gouache. I wasn't really comfortable with the medium. I wasn't new to gouache. I just wasn't experienced in it. And I was also just really picky as an artist. So I'm not gonna invalidate my past self's feelings because I was really honest with that review. That is how I genuinely felt at the time. So um, if you want a super negative review of the Mia Hima Gouache set, I would kind of recommend that video. But ever since that point in my uh, gouache journey, <laughs> I, feel, I feel so cringe saying that. But ever since that point in time, uh, as the years went by, I got more and more comfortable with gouache. And uh, yeah, this intro is gonna be super long, so I'll put timestamps. But in case you're interested, this is the same exact gouache set that I made in that video. So basically I made my own custom gouache set. Um, I use this set till this day and it's amazing. I really like it. So basically I made my own custom colors in this much more small and portable and cute set, in my opinion. The colors are the exact shades that I like to use, or at least close to the shades that I like to use. And yeah, as you can see, it gets super messy, but I grew to like not mind that. I'm not as crazy as I was before with needing the colors to be perfectly clean and uh, the consistency is actually pretty dry with some of the colors. But all I do to activate it is when I want to use it, I just spray, use a spray bottle 
and I don't even mix the colors to make it super smooth. I just spray it a little bit and then start painting. I know some people really like to clean their gouache palettes and make sure it's all silky smooth. I just don't have the time for that and I don't mind using it semi-dry. It's definitely not dry dry, it's just a little bit dry, like half dry. But yeah, since my attitude towards gouache, or not attitude, but habits with gouache change so drastically, I have like a pretty positive feeling that I will really like this set. Um, because most of my negatives or, or like cons in my first review of the Me Him Gouache set, uh, like I don't have those feelings anymore. But those feelings are still valid. Like those were my past feelings uh, as a beginner and as someone who is like really picky with cleanliness. <laughs> yeah, I think the word I'm trying to use is like frugal, I think. I was really like frugal with my art supplies. I wanted everything to be perfect. I didn't want to mess up anything or waste a single drop of paint, which is unrealistic, but that's how I felt. So yeah. My point in this introduction was to sort of just give like a history of my gouache usage in a way. And also just like, uh, like explain my point of view going into this review. So I've used gouache a lot in the past few months. Um, I'm pretty, kind of experience with the medium. I'm not an expert by any means, but uh, yeah. So my review may not be everyone's opinion and people who have negative reviews from the, for the Mia Himi gouache set have my sincere sympathy. <laughs> like I, I agree with them. I agreed with them at some point in my life and I know how it feels to hate it. So yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I finally have all of them unwrapped and put in order. And yeah, unwrapping them was absolute torture, but it was nothing compared to actually putting them in order. That took me way longer than I expected because I started off doing it from yellow to red to... I forget, I forget how I did it. But I hated the order and I kept taking them all out and putting them back in again. And I got so fed up that I just searched up a Google image of the set and just saw which which one I liked most. Anyways, I think this set looks extremely adorable and like I'm excited to just dive into it. It looks so cool. Oh, so one last thing for anyone who's thinking of buying the set, here's how it looks like on my desk for reference. It takes up a lot of space. Uh, I'm lucky that I have like an L-shaped desk. So I, like all my computer stuff are far away and like I have like a full table there. Uh, I think my table's like 55 inches long. I could be way off, but yeah. Here's another angle, just like perspective of how big it is. It's bigger than my iPad. <laughs> All right, so for today's video, I'm going to be working in my sketchbook to test out these gouache paints. I really love working in my sketchbook with gouache. It's just such a fun medium to use. So um, having these paints work in my sketchbook paper, which is super smooth, is really important for me. My sketchbook, by the way, in case you don't know, is the Moleskin A5 sketchbook. And um, yeah, I'm just really trying to finish this sketchbook. Uh, it's been it's been a while. I have. 38 pages left, I think, and I'm starting to get burnt out from it, which is not a good sign. But anyways, uh, as for the topic of like what I'm actually drawing here on screen, uh, this is Wednesday Adams from the Wednesday Netflix TV show. I've been dying to draw her for so long. And when I was starting filming this video, I had no idea what I was gonna do. Cause usually I either do like a random Pinterest inspired spread or I do like a spread fully inspired by a television show, but I was not in the mood to like 
make a Wednesday themed video, if that makes sense. Like I just wanted to draw Wednesday without it being the theme for the video. So that's what I ended up doing. I ended up just doing whatever I felt for today uh, without stressing too much about like having everything matched together in this uh, sketchbook spread. Now, in my opinion, I do not think I did Jenna Ortega uh, justice. I don't know if that's how you pronounce her name, but I don't think it really looks like her. Um, <laughs> I feel like it almost looks like her, but not quite. So that's something I kind of want to work on, just like getting the resemblance a bit better. But yeah, that's the, that's the sketch for today's video, um, for the portrait at least. And here I'm actually starting painting. So I don't know if you noticed, but the speed of today's um, time lapse is a lot slower. So you can actually see me like mixing colors uh, and building up this painting super slowly. This painting had a really long um, like ugly phase or just like weird phase. So the reason the speed is so much slower is because I'm starting to film the entire painting process on my phone in real time compared to just filming in time lapse like I usually do. And this way I could edit it and control the speed that it's sped up by, if that makes sense. Anyways, I'm glad I slowed it down for this video because with gouache, there's a huge like weird phase, as I mentioned earlier, and it's nice to see how the colors build up on top of each other. I've actually been wanting to switch up my editing style for videos for a really long time now. And one of my main motivations for switching it up is actually today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across the world. It's a place to get inspired, learn new skills, and put those skills to work in meaningful ways. I was really excited to start with Skillshare because I've been meaning to learn new skills, discover new hobbies, and also just improve my work ethic in general for a really long time now. Skillshare offers a huge variety of classes from creative classes like animation, illustration, and photography to more technical stuff like business, web development, video editing, and productivity. A class that I really enjoyed taking was DaVinci Resolve the Video Editing Workflow by Fred Trevino. I've been meaning to improve my video editing skills using DaVinci Resolve specifically since it's a free program and this course really helped me get familiar with it. The class is split into 11 lessons and is one hour and 32 minutes in total. In that short amount of time, I learned a lot about the interface layout of DaVinci Resolve, which was pretty confusing for me. I also learned a lot about the basic and advanced tools, sound editing, how to make titles, and exporting tips. Using this class, my workflow when using DaVinci Resolve has been a lot smoother than it was in the past, and I think I'm gonna start using DaVinci Resolve for all my videos. With Skillshare, you can make 2023 the year you perfect a new creative hobby, land a new career, or launch your business. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back to painting. Now for this gouache set, I really love the quality of the paints. Uh, I never had a problem with the quality of the paints. In fact, I used my old Miyahimi set in my tiny custom set, as you could see in that old video. Um, so the quality never bothered me. And I think the quality is so much better than other brands like Reeves gouache and Arteza gouache even. So if you're looking for cheap student grade gouache, this is amazing. Like it's such a good set and uh, the lights go uh, opaquely on top of the dark colors. The dark colors layer really nicely. Nothing gets muddy. Uh, and I know it's monochromatic at the moment, but in the next painting, I use like complementary colors and it still looks really great. For my gouache process, as you could see in this video, um, since it's now slowed down and like not going super fast, uh, I go back and forth a lot. Like I darken things up, I lighten them again, and you know, I just keep going like that uh, to get like transition shades and you know, make the highlights stand out, but also not make them stand out too much. Now, I'm still not an expert at face structure, so uh, Wednesday's face here is a little bit questionable but I still really like how it turns out. I think it looks stylized, not exactly like the actress who plays her, but still kind of resembles Wednesday. This is my favorite part of the process, which is adding the details to the face. Uh, before it looks really creepy, <laughs> um, but yeah, adding the eyelashes, eyes, and the, the eyebrows and stuff like that, like all the really extreme dark values really helps uh, bring it together a bit, but yeah, it, it, it starts to look like her in this phase, but it's still not perfect in my opinion. Also, uh, one thing I wanted to mention is that my style with gouache is really, really blocky. 
that's just the level that I'm at at the moment. Uh, I know some people uh, know how to like make it super smooth and blend everything into each other. Uh, these gouache definitely blend. It just, I like keeping things blocky and structured. Uh, it's partly style and partially skill level. Anyways, back to the actual quality of the gouache. I think it's great and I would highly recommend this set or just like the similar set, like the 24 version to beginners, intermediates, even like experts, honestly. I feel like it's so fun. Uh, I love not having to mix every single color. <laughs> like I know with professional grade gouache, like Windsor & Newton, which I've never tried before, uh, you can only buy a certain amount of colors and like your painting depends a lot on the colors that you can mix. I like being spoiled and having like 56 colors to have fun with. You still have to mix your own shades. Like it's not, you don't have every single shade under the rainbow, but it helps so much. And you don't have to use as much white because the set comes with a lot of pastel colors already. Now I understand that a lot of people really like to like practice color mixing and you know do things professionally i guess uh with like a limited color palette so like six colors or 12 colors and i guess you could do that with this set you could make a like a limited palette of your own only choose to use like specific colors uh i haven't tried that yet though um i would have to check if the colors get muddy like if you mix blue and red together would it make a clear purple or would it get muddy basically um, yeah, I haven't tested that out, unfortunately. I'm definitely curious to try and see if the colors remain clear and if you can like actually make a painting with just the primaries and like white and black, of course. But yeah, for now, I'm just having fun using the entire set to my advantage. So the set comes with two papers with the color names listed. There's no light fastness or pigment information, but that's to be kind of expected since this is definitely a student grade. Uh, set like I wouldn't recommend this to replace professional grade gouache I've never even tried professional grade gouache but if you just want to have fun with the medium and you know try something new or uh, you really love gouache and you want to keep having fun with it not really at like a professional grade level I would recommend this set <laughs> but it's definitely not professional grade and would I don't think it could replace professional grade also for the color cards with all the names and stuff I noticed that some of the names are professional uh, and what I mean by professional is like they're like common names like Prussian blue, ultramarine blue, uh, cobalt blue even uh, but other names are kind of just random so like what I thought was yellow ochre is actually named earth yellow but honestly in my opinion this does not matter like for me personally at least i i cannot care less about the color names i don't even pay attention to pigments most of the time i just want to have fun painting so that's my perspective on this set uh, other people need different things of course so this isn't like the perfect set for everyone anyways here on screen uh i kind of got off track there but <laughs> here on screen i'm starting the second page i wanted to make a really dramatic landscape so i used two reference photos and kind of just like made my own thing out of them uh, I'll put the two reference photos on the screen because I think it's kind of interesting, I guess. Um, I really love the red sky from one of them, but I made it more red, <laughs> uh, orangey red. I love, I just love scarlet orangey reds. And then I added the clouds. This was so fun to make. It was really relaxing and there was no pressure like with the Wednesday painting to make anything exact since it's like a landscape. So everything's organic. It, the shapes don't have to be perfect but i also really love the tilted landscape from the second reference photo and also just like how wispy the trees looked but yeah i had a lot of fun doing the clouds as you can see even though they're not the same colors like it's not monochromatic the red blends in so well with like the bluish gray color that i'm using um so yeah uh, i really think the blending is amazing with these paints also, one thing that a lot of people have issue with with this set is the like the consistency of the paints. Personally, I feel like the consistency is perfect, at least for my preference. I actually have to water them down when I take a bunch and put it in my palette. Uh, like I use a lot of water on my brush um, because it's super thick. And yeah, I don't know. I really like the consistency. It doesn't need a lot of water, but it still requires some water. Also, as the paints dry on the surface, uh, you kind of have to like mix it in and, you know, dig for the more wet paint, I guess. 
Anyways, here I'm just blending in the sky a bit more because it was a bit too vibrant. But yeah, just like with the face, I go back and forth between like darker and lighter values. And I really love using gouache that way because sometimes like it's just nice putting light colors on top of the dark ones and blending it in. Uh, it, it makes for really smooth and like soft looking highlights in my experience. Also, because I was alternating between like the really bright reds and the really dark grays and blues and stuff like that, uh, the palette did get really messy. I think you can even see a little bit on screen here. Like a lot of the colors have uh, like darker colors smudged into them. I learned not to mind that, especially since there's so much color in these 30 milliliter cups that it doesn't even matter that much if the surface gets muddy and you have to scrape some darker color off gently. Uh, I learned how to clean it without wasting too much paint. And also like, it's so convenient to just double dip basically. <laughs> like I don't wanna have to clean up my brush from one color every single time I need another color. So I learned to just like put up with the mess and currently, I honestly don't mind if colors get mixed together. Like one swipe with like a slightly wet brush and you know, like a little bit of stirring, the color is good as new again. I don't think it needs that much maintenance, but I think as the colors get more and more used up, uh, they'll start drying faster. So it might need, like you might need to start using a spray bottle or something to activate the paints before you start painting. I don't think I'm going to like activate the paints every single day or like every single week to take care of the set. Uh, like I don't think it needs that much maintenance. I think I'll just leave it to dry out naturally. Like that's totally fine. But when I start using the set, like uh, later on, uh, I'll just uh, use the spray bottle each time. Anyways, back to this landscape that I'm doing here on screen. Uh, as you can see, I'm kind of just winging it with the, the grass. Uh, I made it this uh, muddy green color that I really love. Uh, it's kind of like sage green. This is where I start like diverting from the reference photos I was using. I'm just uh, using like the tilted one as a reference for making like darker spots in the grass, but the colors are completely different. And I even like make up my own pattern for the grass just to make it look more like flowy and natural. Uh, but yeah, this is one of the reasons I really love gouache. Like everything looks so pastel and matte on top of each other. I just love the look of it. Acrylic is so much more shiny and I don't know, I can never make acrylics as pastel as this, at least in my experience. Anyways, here I'm painting in the tree trunks uh, and I made it pretty slow. Like the speed of the video, it's almost real time. I was really hesitant to cover up the sky, especially since I love how the sky turned out, but it's okay. I mean, it's part of the process and I feel like it looked really nice at the end uh, with a lot of tree trunks and a lot of branches covering it up. Of course, I still can't help but miss the way the sky looks at this part of the process. Anyways, I think that's it for today's video, uh, voiceover wise. Uh, I hope the review for these paints wasn't too brief. Like I tried to go kind of into detail on how I use it, like how I feel about the texture, the, the layout, the colors, and that sort of thing. Uh, overall, my review is like super positive as I predicted at the start of this video. <laughs> I really like how these paints work. And I really like the layout. Like I grew to like this sort of layout where all the paints are already open. You don't have to squeeze out of a bottle each time you want to use gouache. That's actually one of the main reasons that I really love jelly gouache now, as well as my own custom set. Cause anytime I want to use gouache, it's just like watercolors. I could just bring out a palette. Everything's already set up. I don't have to guess which colors I'm going to use and which colors I'm not going to use. Cause that's almost impossible for me. Uh, I love using a ton of colors, mixing them all up together. And yeah, it's just kind of hard to predict when I'm squeezing out of a tube, which colors I'll need. Another problem that I used to have when I used to use tube paint is I never knew how much to squeeze out from each color. And that would actually generate a lot of waste because if I squeezed out too much, it's not like with my current palette where it doesn't really matter. Uh, like I don't have to put out a certain amount. It's all out anyways. Uh, with the tube, anything I would squeeze out, uh, it would eventually get wasted with the palette itself. Like I'd clean out the palette and there'd be chunks of paint going to waste. Now, one major improvement between this review, like the set that I'm reviewing in this video and the one that I was reviewing in the previous video 
is that the color selection is obviously a lot better in this one compared to the 18 color set that I reviewed last time. The 18 color set was honestly just not aesthetically pleasing to look at and that bothered me and till this day it does bother me when I look at that set. The colors are so ugly together and I know that's like a weird reason to hate a set but that's just the way I think sometimes. Also, the 18 color set is so much more expensive compared to getting the 24 color set. So on Amazon now, they have a 24 color set and it's a lot more cost effective, at least in Canada. I think the 24 color set is like $43. And then for some reason in my country, Canada, the 18 color set is like 35. So it's only like a $5 difference, but there's so much more colors in the 24 color set. Also, I forgot to mention at the start of this uh, video, the 56 color set was on Amazon for I think 60 or maybe 66 Canadian dollars. So it's really cheap. Like for 56 colors, only having to spend like $66. It's just a little over $1 for each 30 milliliter cup of gouache, which is amazing. And also I really love, like I really prefer the color selections of the 24 color set and the 56 color set because both of those sets have a lot of like lighter colors and pastels. So if you're looking for a set that's smaller than the 56, I would definitely recommend the 24 over the 18 color set. So overall, I really love the jelly gouache setup and I really love my custom palette as well for more like confined spaces and you know, just traveling since like this set is huge. Um, but yeah, I would highly recommend it. And yeah, that's, uh, that's all for the review portion of this video. All right, that's it for today's video. Um, this is the sketchbook spread that I made using the gouache colors. It was really fun. And I didn't even need to use colored pencils like I usually do. Usually I like have to support the gouache with colored pencils, but today I just had fun using only gouache. I probably went in depth about my opinion or like my new opinion about the sets uh, in the voiceover for this video, but I just want to reiterate, I had such a blast with this. Um, and I can't wait to use this set a lot more often. I feel like this is gonna become my main uh, at-home gouache set. Let me put it in frame one second. But yeah, as I was saying, I feel like this is gonna be my main at-home gouache set that I'm gonna use from now on. I still love my compact gouache set over here, but I'll probably use it mainly when I'm going outside and um, traveling or something. But as you can see here, the colors did get a little dirty, but it's not a huge deal. Like it's actually really easy to clean up. Also a little bit of drying has happened, but it's not that dramatic. But yeah, I can't wait to continue using this set. Gouache has recently become my new favorite medium. Like even in pages before here, I've recently just gotten so addicted to the medium again. So I don't have a clear opinion on whether or not I recommend this set for beginners. Uh, if you really love gouache or if you really want to dive in and, you know, try try a new medium or something, I recommend Mia Humi, but I don't necessarily recommend this set since it's kind of huge. Any, any Mia Humi set would probably be really fun to use. 
but my opinion in my old video still kind of stands because some people are just sensitive, I guess, uh, like I was when I was starting out with this new medium. So I think the old video, the old review is still kind of worth a watch if you want like a negative opinion to balance out this video. Cause this video is just screaming positivity. <laughs> I had such a blast. I can't say anything bad about this set. So yeah, overall it's really up to you. And if you're a little hesitant, I, I highly suggest getting like a 24 color set maybe. And if you hate it, you can always transfer it into like a small palette like this, like I did. So yeah, there's, there's definitely options. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I had such a fun time making it and I feel like it's a really nice return to YouTube. But yeah, thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video whenever that comes out. Bye.